In today's Oceania Island uh, video, we are going to build a habitat for the wonderful Kiwi. As you can see it roaming around in the finished habitat. If you want to know how we got there, remember this is a series in which we're going to go step by step through the process of building this wonderful island. As you can see here in the little time lapse we had in the last episode too, the full process will be visible at the end of this series. And um, before we go to start in today's video, let's have a little message from the sponsor. Special thanks to our sponsor of today's video and the sponsor of the channel. Instant Gaming is a wonderful platform on which you can get your favorite games to a greater value. Here you've got 24-7 support, you've got over 10,000 games at your hand and you can find them very simple via a search bar just like our Planet Games over here or if you fancy have a look at Cities for example, everything is here including all the DLCs you wish to have. So special thanks again to Instant Gaming, link is in the description if you want to grab a game, please click there and have fun. Well, before we start really into the video, let me just quickly pinpoint that you can obviously also get the DLC for a great value um, on Instant Gaming. Linky is in the description. Now also, today's video is going to be a little bit more different than usual, and I'm going to explain why. So we will have chunks in which we are going to talk about the steps I've done, and they are only sped up by two times. So because I got a lot of feedback that some things may a little bit too quick, so I thought why not make it a bit more slow and talk you through the process. So as you can see over here, I have already done the um, the first rock work so to say this is something I did not include in the video you've seen the rock work in the last episode um, I just made some general rock work and um, a very nice shelter over here we do know that the kiwi is a nocturnal animal so you'll see that this habitat the Finnish habitat is actually very um, overgrown and gives them a lot of shade and stuff and also because I wanted to make them visible in the house as well you can tell that there is this little viewing bulb as you can see it's separated in the middle by the house and I just figured okay we need a couple more little details here to make it look good I like put this fake ladder here as if they could jump on top of it um, and just put a couple of little details here and there you know nothing too crazy um, and also adding a little shelter in the middle so that they if they you know if they feel to go outside at daytime they have a lot of shade a lot of dark areas to go to um, so just to make sure that potentially they could even be outside and uh, using a couple of these pieces I have actually mixed uh, a couple of tropical pieces that I found um, so I didn't really focus solely on the Oceania pieces but I also mixed them up with pieces from for example the tropical pack and also from I forgot I think Australia pack is also something I use so um, it's very helpful to mix these things up and as a little tip you can always uh, do this by um, by selecting certain materials for example I think it's a very good thing also to uh, search for a certain material in the menu and next up, we are going to focus on the fences. Actually, I did use some of the thatch pieces that are meant to be for a roof as a fence, but you can really use them in a nice way simply because they um, they have a little bit of these uh, kind of nice pillars behind that that are meant to be like a scaffolding, I guess, for the roof, but they almost look like a fence. As you can see over here, these turquoise things. And um, then I wanted to do something uh, like a bit more of a viewing gallery, actually. So I used this boat as on top of it, and we will also make it hang down with some ropes. Granted, it's physically not 100% accurate. I may have to change that a little. I have an idea already, but uh, for the moment being, I'm fine with the solution. You can see I'm using um, a little bit of a row piece here as well, because I wanted to put in a couple of plants there, uh, just to break the view here and there, to grant these animals a bit more privacy, even though they are somewhat confident. But um, maybe I should also mention that this habitat was originally planned to be the quaka habitat but along the way and also due to the people in the chat in the live stream to be more precise I think it was Mr. Scottish uh, or Omi I can't really remember who of these two guys it was but um, they mentioned that having the kiwi as a animal that is in a um, walkthrough habitat may not be the best idea simply because they're kind of aggressive and even though Frontier did put this info in the Zoopedia um, realistically you wouldn't have like a walkthrough habitat with them and since they're nocturnal it doesn't really make that much sense anyways um, even though I have to say that the uh, nocturnal animals would have been together with the fox which the flying fox which would have been good but now I exchanged this the uh, quokka is now going to be in the walkthrough habitat while the kiwi is becoming uh, a part of this wonderful habitat over here. <clears throat> 
So yeah, as promised, um, we will put uh, some plants in here. And I think with the slower stuff, you can see really how I'm trying always to find the right pieces. Um, so I'm actually going through the menu and, and trying to focus on what could be nice in there. And I ended up using the grass pieces from uh, the new free update because they are relatively small. They are not really like too you know they, they don't really have a certain appeal to, they're not too colorful they're not too white whatever so they work as very good clutter and i just wanted to have some growing clutter in here as if there was something growing down use one of the longer pieces too just to give it a bit of character you know uh, making sure that we have something growing over here put one of these new hanging plants the kaha kaka kaha kaka <laughs> as I like to call it. Um, and that's about it already. It's like really not that much I was doing. Um, and now you can see also part of my process. I just figured I need to have some idea about this building. And so I, um, yeah, I started focusing on the building here in the back, as you can see. Um, I did certain things in the meantime. So this is not a hard cut over here. It's It's been a bit of work I did in between. Since free build does not work as of now, I uh, needed to go into the struggle of actually path building uh, <laughs> with the game. But you see, it did work out pretty neat um, at the end. And I then uh, decided to build the house. You'll see actually the house latest um, in the final um, walkthrough that I did already do a couple more things with the house. But um, it's it, it turned out very nice for the moment being. It's not the finished house, obviously. But sometimes I do skip a little bit forward in my build. So we are not yet done with the Kiwi habitat. But in order to finish it correctly, I just needed to have this done for the moment. And as I said, it's not going to be 100% detailed. It's actually now now the the moment where I need to have a certain idea of the size of the colors of the form factor so I can make the Kiwi habitat actually fitting right into it the best way possible so I think this is a very great learning you guys can also take uh, out of the video as an inspiration um, sometimes it's well not sometimes I, I bet you should say always it's better to not go in a straight line what, what, from your build so what I always try to do is to figure out the best way possible. So I, has, I have a very kind of detailed idea in my mind, but in my mind, it's all very easy and simple. And if you start building, you know that certain things don't pan out the way you envisioned them. So you have to react to what is working and whatnot. And this is what I did um, when I you know, started building this build, for example. I adapted by putting the kiwi in this habitat rather than the um, quokka. And the moment I decided that, I remembered that I needed to do certain things different about the habitat, not keep it so open, make it a lot more overgrown. And that changed, obviously, the approach of how I wanted this area to look in general. So um, this is the reason why I then thought, okay, you have to go into the um, <coughs> into the build here of the little shops. And I started building the, the layout of the shops to give me, basically, the groundwork or like the foundation of this in order to build the habitat around better. So uh, I think it's a very good uh, reason to call that out and make you guys aware of the fact that this is something that will help you to, be to build better habitats, but also to build better areas in general, to make things a lot more coherent with each other and make them more go hand in hand. Because if you build step by step, which may actually seem easier, it, it has also the danger embedded in itself that you wouldn't be possible to change certain things afterwards or if you would need to change them anyways it's it's going to be a lot harder simply because you have to completely rip apart certain things and this is not your fault per se but it's the fault of the planning because you didn't know about the thing in the past because you haven't planned it out before obviously so you have to react later and the way i do it and especially in this build um, makes me uh, puts me into a position where i can already adapt to certain things that will happen in the next episode so it's kind of a longer part over here to uh, talk you through my process of building and that everything isn't as streamlined as you see it sometimes in the speed builds because i do certainly cut the speed builds in a way that the steps more often than not seem to be coherent right after each other. But that's not how I work. That's not how it works in general. So hopefully it's gonna helpful, be helpful for you here. And you can see we are almost done with the blueprint. I'm not going to make more than that. And you can see we skip forward now to the next part where I decided, okay, it's now time to put some more clutter in. You can see um, the habitat actually changed already quite a bit. I have already started to adapt for the uh, Kiwi. So I put in a couple more um, shadings and made sure that everything looks nice. Put a couple more plants in. 
And so just to ensure that the Kiwi has a good time roaming around, um, I will in a, in a second also delete the uh, enrichment items of uh, the Quokka that I used to have in there and will exchange them with the actual enrichment items that the Kiwi will require. So yeah, putting down a couple more um, plants that have a bit more of a... Uh, you know, shade to it, like they do cast a bit more shading. And as you can see, uh, the last part in this build today, in the voiceover build, you can see already the Kiwis roaming around. They are now part of the habitat and I go, I went on building more shades here and there. So obviously the game isn't as great to react to animals being nocturnal, so they will eventually be outside anyways at daytime. But uh, I've seen them already going quite a lot of times into their shelter at daytime, so at least the game does something with it. And I decided to go on. You can see I'm, I'm checking certain things over here with the traversable area if everything is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, just as I said, uh, made sure that the enrichment items are the right ones. I love the fact that they have this mound over here. I haven't seen them using it. So maybe you guys have seen this at the beginning of the video in the, uh, in the cinematic. If I have caught them doing that, I will include that. If not, well, maybe we'll see that in the future. But... Um, I was really happy to do this and then just actually brought a couple of more rocks in to blend this enrichment piece in nicer. And this is something I would highly recommend. The enrichment pieces in this game are great, but they are so much of a disturbance for most of the habitats you build. They do not feel organically embedded. They always feel like an item that is completely ripped apart from the overlook of your habitat if you just place them down. So in that sense, I really highly recommend to try your best to embed them with like rocks with textures maybe even build a certain thing over them just ensure that you don't have moving parts covered or something like that to you know keep the illusion of, of it being used properly but yeah that's something i i highly recommend doing make sure that your uh, enrichment items are finely embedded in a nice way i also figured that over here the people can see a little bit too much of the habitat so we put a giant fern in here honestly those will be my new go-to pieces to just kind of uh, block the view they are they're just like gorgeous for that they really do do the job pr pretty properly and then the last thing i figured is that the water looks a little bit too empty and I also rec uh, like, like figured that since this is all one water volume, uh, it may actually be a little bit of an issue. I should have divided that into two, maybe to make this water a bit more dark and smirky and just keep the one for the, you know, for the penguins uh, clean. Maybe I'm going to adjust that later on. But yeah, I just put a couple of uh, greenery things here on top of the water, so as if there was some, uh, not really how that it's called in English, uh, onto the water. But yeah, now let's move into the real-time part to have a look. All right, we start up where we ended up last time, and this is with the little penguin habitat over here. Uh, as you can tell, there were a couple of little things I adjusted, nothing major, but we want to turn around to have a look at the Kiwi habitat. There is uh, this plaza we talked about. I just I just did a couple of little things, but yeah. Let's have a little looky look inside of the habitat. There is something to show you. So um, first of all, we have a baby, which is really cool. I haven't had that in the time lapse, but uh, yeah, you'll see that in here. Um, really lovely. I think the the habitat itself turned out beautifully. There's one more thing I want to do to give this whole thing a bit more shade over the house itself, but um, they do already use the house quite nicely. I want to just emphasize one thing that I haven't done before. Um, I placed these bubbles, like these viewing domes, this time around in a relatively realistic manner. And to show you what I mean by that is, so this is the entrance. This is the entrance area where realistically they would go in. Just imagine there is a staircase going down, like in a zigzag going down, and then you would enter this one. And from this dome over here, you're going to go all the way over to this dome. This means in between of these two domes, you can't really place any trees and so on. So this is why I left this rather untouched over here. Look at the Kiwi running <laughs> over here. Um, also mentioning there are two adult females in here. Realistically, you wouldn't have that, but I just wanted to speed up the process of getting a baby. Uh, and I also wanted to have, let me see if I can see the color morph in here. No, it's not in here. Um, then it's roaming around anywhere else. Uh, I don't know where it is. Let's have a look if we can catch it out here. No, this is not the one because there's this one color morph I absolutely adore. They don't have that many variants. Uh, surely it's in here, right? Uh, no, it's no one, no one in there. So where are you then? Am I so stupidly blind? Okay, I can't, I can't, can't find it. Maybe it was in here. I'm just too blind to see. No, it's not. Huh? It's not even that big of a habitat. Where would you be? Where would you be, my friend? So there is the other one, the little small one. Is it escaped? Um, okay. I don't really know exactly where it was. What, what, what was? But. 
Okay, let's have a little look. We, we can also jump out because I want to quickly catch the one. Uh, let's have a look where the animals are. So, one, two... Oh, wait a sec. Did just the vet take it away? Because I, I remember it's being uh, injured. So maybe that is that. Uh, let's type in Kiwi. Northern Ireland Brown Kiwi. And, oh yeah, in transit. There you go. Okay, well, that's that. Um, they took it from us. Okay, what a, what a shame it is. Uh, anyways, this is the habitat as it turned out to be looking. And I am absolutely a huge fan of it. There is the baby over here. Look at the tiny one. A little chicken. Um... And yeah, I'm really, really happy to where it is placed now. You can really tell now from the view above um, how lovely it looks. I just want to show you real quick the flyover to uh, make the outro. So we're going to make the root speed a little slower, hide the UI, and then I'm going to hit play. And um, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, this is a pleasure as always doing these videos for you. I really, really love the feedback of all of them. And if you guys want to help me out, uh, do me a favor. Please like the video, leave a comment, just engage with the video. And in the best case possible, sub to the channel if you haven't already because I have a hard time telling the YouTube algorithm that you like my stuff because in fact you like my stuff. The engagement recently has been amazing but it just seems like my video is not pushed out into the algorithm for whatever reason that is. We don't want a philosophy, uh, there is no philosophy around that. I just, oh look at that gorgeous little bubble down there with the penguins swimming down. Oh, I'm just so amazed by it. But yeah, if you want to help me out there that would be lovely um, and other than that I wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. Um, the next episode is coming out soon so um, I'm going to give you all these episodes rather back to back now because this is one coherent island and I want to build it coherently. So make sure to peel your eyes on the channel and be ready for the next episode but until then make sure to like subscribe and blah 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 you've heard it and uh, yeah just have a wonderful time thank you so much as always for the support stay safe everyone and um, that's been it from the camel for today have a good time and goodbye